Let's do an example of Ampere's law. So consider the thick wire, a thick wire of radius r, and this wire is carrying a uniform volume current density j upwards in the z direction. What is the magnetic field B inside and outside of the wire? The first thing to start with on a problem like this is to think about what direction you expect the magnetic field to be in. And we expect the magnetic field to depend on the s direction and only point in the phi hat direction. Next, we're going to draw an Amperian loop in our diagram above. And so we should draw a circular Amperian loop, radius s. And I'm going to have it point in this direction. So that dl vector along the loop is just dl, the magnitude, times phi hat. And we want to choose that because that will make our loop integral, our closed loop integral, very nice. We're taking integral of b dot dl, and well, b dot dl now is just b times dl, since they're both pointing in the same direction. But this is even easier as a line integral, because b is constant along the loop, because it's only dependent on s, which is constant along a loop. It's at some finite s, some fixed s. So you can pull b out of the integral, and then you just have a line integral around a loop, which is just the circumference of the loop. So this line integral just becomes the circumference times b, which depends on s. The other part of Ampere's law involves the enclosed current by the loop. OK, so we need to compute i enclosed, which in general is the integral of j dot dA. OK, so what do we mean by dA here? Well, so our Ampereian loop looks something like this, again, pointing in that direction. And dA is the unit vector, which is pointing normal to this surface inside here. So this black vector here is dA vector, pointing upwards, upwards by the right-hand rule. You could curl your fingers around in the direction of the loop. So dA is dA magnitude in the z-hat direction. Or we can write those in cylindrical coordinates, s prime, ds prime, d phi prime, z hat. By the way, j vector is just j in the z hat direction. So this turns i enclosed, well, it's a double integral, and then it's just j times dA, or j times s prime, ds prime, d phi prime. We need to put limits on our integral from 0 to 2 pi and 0 to s. OK, so now inside of the loop, Let's consider that case. Then s is less than r. And so i enclosed is 2 pi times j. Those are just constants. And then we have an s integral to do, but it's straightforward. And we ultimately get pi s squared times j, where j is now just some constant, the volume current. We can then use Ampere's law to find the magnetic field as a function of s inside of the loop. So Ampere's loop law is the uh, loop integral, closed line integral of b dot dl is mu naught i enclosed. And so that tells us that magnetic field times the circumference is equal to mu naught times pi s squared times j. Here's some cancellations we can do. And ultimately, we find then that the magnetic field outside, sorry, inside, as dependent on s, is mu naught j over 2 times s. OK, so now let's consider what happens outside of the wire for s bigger than r. So then we need to, again, compute i enclosed. And the phi integral gives us a 2 pi. The j is a constant. And the s integral now just goes from 0 to r. And it only goes out to r because we only have current out to s equal to r. We don't have any current for s greater than r. OK, again, this integral is easy to do. We just get pi r squared times j. Notice there's no s dependence in this. So then using Ampere's law, we can, again, solve for the magnetic field. So magnetic field times circumference is equal to mu naught pi r squared j, or doing some cancellations and moving things over. Then the magnetic field outside as a function of s is mu naught j over 2 big R squared over S. OK, so let's just uh, summarize what we have all together. So we have a wire, a thick wire, with some volume current flowing through it in the z-hat direction. 
and this thick wire has some radius, say R here. And we found the magnetic field in the two regions, inside and outside. So inside it was mu naught j s in the phi hat direction. And outside it was mu naught j over 2 r squared over s in the phi hat direction. I want to point out that uh, outside it just looks like the magnetic field from a line current. It falls off like 1 over s, just as you would expect from a normal current from just a line rather than a thick line. Okay, and so let's just again plot then the magnetic field B as a function of S. And so up to S equal to R, it is linear, and outside of S equal to R, it falls off like 1 over S. Okay, so this is an example of how you use Ampere's law in solving for the magnetic field from a current configuration.